Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Poppin'. It's D Boss Reacts to this video by Patrick CC. This is artists who destroyed their careers in seconds. We got the baby on here, of course. He <laughs> He's on so many compilations about this. Let's see uh, what he got to say, though. Let's watch. These artists' careers were never the same after one incident. Whether it was from their own terrible decisions or a minor misstep that got blown out of proportion. Today we are going to discuss them all starting with Macklemore, who leaked a text message that made everyone question what they thought they knew about him. In 2012 and 2013, like you could not go anywhere without hearing the song Thrift Shop. Far from your typical rap song, Macklemore flexed $20 and had suburban moms dancing to his funky saxophone. This song spent six weeks at number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Mac had one hit wonder written all over him. He carried the most stereotypical white rapper image that is perceived as corny by hip hop culture, but he proved everyone wrong with his second hit, Can't Hold Us, which spent five weeks at the number one spot. This track was definitely more of a standard pop track, but two Billboard number ones in his first year as a mainstream artist stamped that he was a force to be reckoned with. However, it was all about to come crashing down, as Macklemore would suffer from success. At the 2014 annual Grammy Awards, Macklemore was nominated in seven categories, the biggest and most prestigious being Best Rap Album and Best Rap Song. After winning Best Rap Performance and Best New Artist, people were happy to see him win two Grammys. Nominated for Best Rap Song up against Drake, Kanye West, Jay-Z, it seemed unlikely Macklemore would win. But Thrift Shop was, in fact, the winner of Best Rap Song of 2014, securing him his third forever. Grammy of the night. But what would come next would shock the world. Up against Drake's Nothing Was the Same, Jay-Z's Magna Carta, Kendrick Lamar's Good Kid Mad City, and Kanye West's Yeezus, mm. Macklemore had absolutely no chance of winning. Everyone was betting on Kendrick since he without a doubt had the best album of the bunch, but wouldn't be entirely surprised if it went to the other nominees. The hip-hop community was floored when Macklemore and Ryan Lewis's The Heist won Best Rap Album of the Year. The Heist couldn't be a more fitting name for this absolute robbery. <laughs> Macklemore was being cooked by the hip-hop community online, reminding him in every comment section that he didn't deserve to win. He felt so much pressure that he decided to text Kendrick Lamar and apologize. You got robbed. I wanted you to win. You it's should so have. Crazy. It's weird and sucks that I robbed you. I was gonna say that during the speech. Then the music started playing during my speech and I froze. Anyway, you know what it is. Congrats on this year and your music. Appreciate you as an artist and as a friend. Much love. We wouldn't have ever seen this text if Macklemore didn't post it to social media, which made it even worse and looked like he was just trying to get in the good graces with the public. Yeah, Did you ever feel any way about him posting the text message too. or anything like that? Yeah, I think it was uncalled for to be 100 with you. Um, mm -hmm. When he sent it to me, I was like, okay, you know, I can see him feeling that type of way because he's a good dude. But um, when you post it. I think for, for confirmation from the world, you know, he probably felt like he had to put it out there, which he didn't need to do. He didn't need to do, but that don't take nothing away from him anyway, because I know where his heart is at, he cool. Despite Kendrick being cordial and saying that Macklemore meant well, hip hop fans couldn't. So I know, I fuck with Kendrick and J. Cole so much. They are so out of the fucking <laughs> spotlight. Like, we never hear anything about them. They are so low key. And they're such mega hip hop stars. It's just so, it's so dope. I love to see it. Or truly accept Macklemore as a part of the culture. They thought he was disingenuous and they didn't really Absolutely. like his music in the first place. Yeah. So this was an easy excuse to forget about him. He stepped out yeah. of the limelight and many people suggest his music was never as ambitious ever again. He felt guilt and that guilt ate him alive. His 2016 album, This Unruly Mess I Made, sold just 61,000 copies in the first week. Him and Ryan Lewis split up shortly after and Mac released another solo album, Gemini, that did decent amongst his fan base, but ultimately he hasn't had any major mainstream success in almost a decade. But unlike Macklemore, DaBaby refused to apologize to anyone, which is leading to one of the dumbest downfalls of all time. Let's Baby exploded onto the mainstream rap scene in 2019 with his hits song Suge, which peaked at number seven on the Billboard Hot 100. In a world of repetitive melodic trap, DaBaby felt fresh and exciting, providing us with bouncy and fun bangers. He dominated for the next two years, constantly having multiple singles on the Billboard Hot 100, and he was in regular rotation on the radio. His track Rockstar with Roddy Rich was the number one song for seven weeks straight, a very tough thing to do as a hip-hop artist. But DaBaby was always known for having a bold oh, personality. He was the type to say whatever he wanted, and if you had a problem, he was more than willing to handle I'm it. Sure he even killed a guy in Walmart. Don't worry, it was self-defense. Well, in July of 2021, 
one on the stage of Rolling Loud, his loose lips got him in major trouble. Maybe some that he can't recover from. You didn't show up today with HIV, AIDS, any of the deadly sexual transmitted diseases. They'll make you die too, but you just put yourself on like that. Lady, if you smell like water, put yourself on like that. Fellas, up. fellas, if you ain't sucking dick in the parking lot, put your cell phone on that cell Completely unprovoked and for no reason at all, the baby was thinking about gay men and what they do in their free time while he was on stage performing. He referred to people with AIDS as dirty and will likely die soon from the illness. Both statements are categorically and factually untrue. The clip was shared onto the internet and sent millions of people into an uproar. The baby addressed this on his Instagram and clarified his message. I wasn't going on no rant. That's called a call to action. That's what that's called because I'm a live performer. I'm the best live performer, the live show killer. You interact with your fans, you get what I'm saying? You watch that specifically. I heard the lights went up gay, straight, you wanna know why? Because even my gay fans don't get fucking AIDS, stupid ass niggas. Him doubling down on his comments made everything way worse, as he clearly was very uneducated on the AIDS disease and the unfair stigmas that come with it. And although he eventually issued an apology addressing the LGBTQ community, he had made countless contradictory statements after. He tried to profit off the controversy in music videos and even kind of redacted his own apology. If I say what I say to get people to raise their cell phones and it's misinterpreted by people who watch a five-second clip at home, you're not supposed to understand what's going on. You couldn't raise your cell phone if you wanted to, so you ain't supposed to be able to digest a clip, uh, you know what I'm saying, a clip that's been altered and shortened with a narrative to go along with it with enough people dropping it, it's gonna do what it do. From here, he got kicked off every major festival in 2021 that he was supposed to perform at. And even when he did perform, he was booed and had garbage thrown at him. A-list celebrities and fellow collaborators condemned him. But the controversy continued. He got into fights, tormented and broke down the mother of his child on Instagram, tried to kiss one of his fans without consent. The baby was not trying to save face. He just kept saying, I'm sorry for being me. His ticket sales plummeted, which resorted to him offering buy one, get one free deals to fill out the venues. One report alleged that he only sold 500 tickets to a venue that holds 14,000 people, and he claims to have lost $30 million because of the controversy. Like what were the answer? Okay, the after. 20, $30 million. $20, $30 million. Then I would have had before the ball dropped 2021. So this happened. Rolling out with July, I had $30 million worth of shows on the schedule before uh, December 31st. All he had to say was, put your hands in the air if you just don't care, and all of this could have been avoided. But if you think what DaBaby said was bad, you'll be horrified by what CeeLo Green said in a series of questionable tweets. If you don't remember the name CeeLo Green or his previous duo, Gnarls Barkley, you definitely remember his two most iconic songs, Crazy and Forget You. Crazy peaked at number two on the Billboard Hot 100 and spent 29 weeks on the chart. Forget You, which he released solo four years later, also went number two on the Hot 100 after spending almost a full year on the charts. CeeLo had a very unique voice and was undeniably talented. He pretty much only gave us two hits, but was an ever-present pop culture figure throughout the early 2010s. Whether he was hosting an award show, his own reality show, voice acting, or being a judge on The Voice, CeeLo was loved and appreciated until some shocking allegations arose. CeeLo was accused by a 33-year-old woman he dined with at a downtown Los Angeles sushi restaurant of placing Which ecstasy, woman? also known as MDMA or Molly, in her drink. The woman later told Los Angeles police detective oh, she woke up naked in town. bed in her hotel room with Green. CeeLo allegedly admitted to law enforcement that he took ecstasy, but denied drugging the woman's drink or committing sexual assault. CeeLo's sexual assault charges were dropped after prosecutors concluded there wasn't enough evidence to take that accusation to court, but he was found guilty on drug charges, which landed him three years probation. But it wasn't the nature of the charges that ruined his oh, career, so it's what he said on Twitter after the case. After being criticized by people in public tweets, he decided to respond. Women who have really been R-worded, remember, but point taken. So if I tried but did not succeed, but the person said I did, then what really happened? What? When someone breaks in a home, there is broken glass. Where is your plausible proof anyone was R-worded? If someone passed out, they're not even with you consciously. So with implies consent. It's hard to see what point he was trying to make here, yeah, but the blogs were not holding back. CeeLo, it's, it's not, not if you forget. CeeLo Green, it isn't if, if the victim is unconscious. After these tweets, his like. reputation was destroyed. He lost all of his live performance bookings. He quit The Voice to avoid being fired. His TV show was canceled. And he basically disappeared from the pop culture zeitgeist, mm, pretty much surviving off it. royalties and small film roles here and there. But I guess him and I are friends now? Yo, Pat, what's up, man? Uh, I'm assuming that your friends call you Pat. My friends do call me Pat, so. This is weird. And um, I consider myself to be one of your friends. What the fuck I is going on, Patrick? To be one of your friends. The next person on our list what lost the fuck her was that, career Patrick? from something that was totally out of her control. In fact, it may have even been a setup. 
Janet Jackson is oh, a woman yeah. who needs no introduction. She's the youngest of the nine iconic Jackson, Jackson family absolutely. siblings. Although she was not a part of the original Jackson 5, she would go on to have a massive solo music career. Too, so Jackson cute. signed the first of two record-breaking multi-million dollar contracts with Virgin Records, establishing her as one of the highest paid artists in the industry. She was named by Billboard magazine in the 90s as the second most successful recording artist of the decade in the United States after Mariah Carey. Over 100 million records sold, 10 Billboard number one songs, 27 top 10 hits, she is easily the most successful artist on this list, so which is why her downfall is even more tragic. The Super Bowl in America is always the most watched televised program every year, with an average of around 100 million people watching the game. The halftime show has historically been a major milestone in an artist's career, as it is the biggest stage they will likely ever be on. In 2004, Janet Jackson was asked to do the show, but not by herself, which was surprising since she easily had enough hits to do a full set. Instead, mm -hmm. she only got to perform two of her songs. Yeah, the other time was filled out by Justin Timberlake, Diddy, Nelly, Kid Rock, and Jessica Simpson. The very last song of the performance was Justin's hit song, Rock Your Body, in which Janet assisted him. The two met at the center of the stage to pose for the grand finale. Justin reaches across Janet's body and pulls off the chest piece of her costume, exposing her breast to 90 million people. The wardrobe malfunction is considered the biggest controversy in televised history. This incident was actually the inspiration for YouTube because of the difficulty finding footage to rewatch online. Now, to some degree, this was planned. Justin's intention was to pull the leather piece off her chest and expose the red underneath but he ripped too much. In the split second the camera was on Janet, you can see her look down in shock. She tried to cover herself while Timberlake stood holding the ripped pieces of her costume and bra. That, that, that confuses me, because bras don't work like that. You can't just pull them and then they expose your titty. That's not how that works. <laughs> Even the cheapest bras don't work like that. So this definitely was set up. That, that doesn't make any sense. If that black part, you know, detached, sure, that makes sense. But why would her nipple pop out? That that don't make sense. Unless he pulled it so hard that he ripped it down. But you would have to rip it downwards. Pulling it to the side, that wouldn't expose it. You would have to rip it down because it has to come over your titty in order to expose it. <laughs> so totally set up. But I feel like he was in on it and she was in on it. But they put all the blame on her. The FCC received more than 500,000 complaints after the performance. CBS was fined $550,000, and the halftime sponsor, AOL, demanded a return of the $10 million advertising cost they paid to the NFL. <laughs> no, <Justin. laughs> they said it, but they just want their money back. Because what the fuck they got to do with anything? Yo, your advertisement still got shown, right? So what do you mean? Oh, no, I'm going to need that refund because that titty popped out. It didn't pop out during the advertisement. What are you talking about? Uh, who, who said AOL that? AOL? No, that's why y'all... <laughs> That's why why y'all where y'all at now in the Man, dust because y'all doing shady shit. Ten million dollar advertising cost they paid to the NFL. Justin apologized. MTV apologized. Janet apologized. Even though she later regretted it because it was an accident. The media went into an all out frenzy. The FCC investigated the halftime show to see if this was a planned mm. media stunt meant to shock the world, citing that because she was wearing a nipple covering, that was evidence this was all set up. Class action lawsuits were filed against Janet by random that? citizens, yeah. claiming that her sexually yeah. explicit performance deserved maximum punitive damages. Every talk show host in the nation oh, tried to buy had bar. to pay out $3.5 million to settle various indecency complaints, so they went and banned all radio and TV stations that they owned from playing any of Janet Jackson's music. Janet was blackballed from the music industry over an accident, and Justin was not punished at all, even though it was definitely his fault. There is no doubt her punishment was unfair and likely due to her gender and race. Her career after that wasn't totally dismissed. She did have a number one album, a Grammy nomination, some light billboard presence, but this incident lingered like a dark cloud over her head for many years, and slowly she faded out of the mainstream. I am one of those women, women who have been gagged, both literally and emotionally, women mm. who have been abused, women who have been intimidated, women who have lived in fear. I stand with you. You are my sisters. However, today, most people can all agree that this was just an overreaction, and she is still highly regarded as one of the most iconic pop stars of all time. Overreacting to small mistakes seemed to be common in the early 2000s, because this next artist's career was destroyed by something so small, it's almost unbelievable. Oh, Ashley yeah. Simpson was the younger sister of the already famous pop star Jessica Simpson, mm -hmm. who was a multi-platinum Billboard charting recording artist. She also had she her own MTV show, Newlyweds, yeah, Nick and Jessica, phone, was one of the most popular programs on the network. 
MTV wanted to capitalize on, on the Simpsons Monday, sisters' newfound I'm fame and gave Ashley her own series called The I'm Ashley waiting. Simpson Show. The series ran for two seasons and aired every week on MTV oh, directly dog. after Jessica's show. Viewers who were invested in Jess were introduced to Ashley immediately after. Ashley was desperate to not live in the shadows of her she sister. Looks like that she looks like that one nigga though. blonde hair brown and built a pop punk image Some to complement owns. her pop rock music. Her album's lead single, Pieces on the of wedding Me, crashes. became an instant hit that in wedding. the United States. The song peaked at number five on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 and sold over 500,000 copies nationwide. Ashley's debut album was released soon after, with an estimated 390,000 <laughs> copies sold in its first week. They're Worldwide, the album sold about. more than 5 million copies. She had a bigger debut than her sister, but her career ended just before it took off. Saturday Night Live, 2004. Ashley Simpson was set to perform her single Pieces of Me when this happened. On a Monday, I waited. On a Tuesday, I waited. On a Wednesday, I can't see. You might be kind of confused as to what happened. Basically, the backing vocals started playing before Ashley expected them, as it was her intention to lip sync her performance. But instead of trying to catch up to the song, she stood there in a panic, then hit this extremely awkward jig dance twice before ultimately exiting the stage without saying anything. The show cut to commercial, and when it came back, she blamed her band. Ladies and gentlemen, what can I say? Live TV. Exactly. I feel so bad my band started playing the wrong song, and I know what to do, so I thought I'd do a hoedown. If she just told the truth right away, she may have been able to avoid the backlash. But instead, Ashley became a laughing stock. poked fun at her sister's performance on saturday night live was well out of sync you could say all right Thanks sorry she. we had to do that <laughs> it was just our own little lip syncing adventure <laughs> we were mocking her at just 19 she was publicly ridiculed by the world and this is all especially ridiculous considering today's standards are much lower it almost feels right. like lip syncing isn't even a real thing anymore half of my favorite artists at their live shows just let the song play jump around and yell random ad libs even though ashley was a decent performer and she did have an opportunity to redeem herself on various late night shows nobody cared nobody wanted to give her a second chance it was too much fun to make jokes and boo her off stage mm. She did have a moderate comeback with her single Boyfriend in 2005 and her second album oh, eventually yeah. selling 3 million copies worldwide, but she had already seen the peak of her music career and as it slowly dwindled away, she maintained her relevance in the 2010s through relationships, various television projects, and her own social media. But the last person on our list has the most unexpected, shocking, and horrifying incidents that landed them in prison. In 2015, the world was dancing to Silent Toe's hit song, Watch Me. The song oh. paired with the massive viral dance, because The Whip and the Nay Nay. All of social media was flooded with videos of people oh. doing the dance. With Vine and Instagram <laughs> peaking in popularity, Silent Toe laid the foundation for what would become extremely normal on TikTok many years later. He performed at award shows, on Nickelodeon, every talk show in America. The virality got the single to number three on the Billboard Hot 100, as well as 1.8 billion views on YouTube. Today, the record is six times platinum. Unfortunately, hip-hop dance tracks have a history of being impossible to outdo, because for every one that becomes culturally iconic, there are hundreds of cheesy failed attempts to recreate the moment. Silent Hill waited three years to drop his album fresh out of high school, which failed to generate any buzz, and his second album went almost totally unnoticed. But before you could fully count him out, he made a decision that officially ended his career. On January 21st, 2021, the 23-year-old rapper was arrested for the murder of his cousin, 34-year-old Frederick murder. Brooks, after a shooting in DeKalb County, Georgia. Police said officers found Rooks suffering from multiple gunshot wounds at a home off of Deep Shoals Circle. He was pronounced dead at the scene. 
Investigators did not have a suspect at the time. Responding officers were able to obtain video from the security cameras of multiple residents and later identified Hawk, or Silento, as the gunman. Silento was arrested February 1st, 2021, and then later indicted by a Georgia grand jury on four felonies. One count of malice murder, one count of felony murder, aggravated assault, and gun possession during the commission of a felony. As of now, the court has deemed Silent Hill unfit for the safety of the public and will remain incarcerated until further trial. Since the trial has not started yet, we don't know how he did it, we don't know why he did it, and we don't know how long he might be in jail, but we do know is that his career is officially over. I mean, based on what you said, it was already over. His albums weren't doing nothing at all. But yeah, that is wild that he would kill his cousin out of all people. Um, but yeah, damn, this is unfortunate <laughs> because a lot of these people, they have some bops, you know, so for their careers to fall so flat, it does suck. I had no idea that happened with CeeLo though. That's wild. He basically was pretty much saying that he probably didn't intend on, on saying that, oh, if you unconscious, is it rape? If you, if you forgot it even happened, is it really assault? Like, what are you talking about? Maybe he meant something else, but that's what it sounded like. That was really weird. Uh, but yeah, this was interesting. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know what other videos you want to watch, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!